guys, welcome back. So today I wanna to show you one of my business's best-selling items, and that is tumblers. More specifically, these wood grain tumblers. I've been selling these since the beginning. They're one of my best-selling items. I thoroughly enjoy making these. The best part is you don't have to be a pro to achieve this wood grain. It's very simple and easy, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So you can literally do it in any color that alcohol ink comes in. This one I obviously did brown. Um, the customer wanted just a real looking wood grain tumbler. But today we're gonna be doing a gray wood grain. So the supplies that you will need to do this craft is a stainless steel tumbler. You can use any size that you want. Alcohol ink. I always use the Brie Reese alcohol ink. And we're gonna be using this fog one and it looks like a light gray. So I think that's gonna turn out really cool. You're also gonna need a foam football. I get these at the Dollar Tree. You could also use a foam pool noodle if you want to. You'll also need some masking tape, some gloves when it's time to do our two-part epoxy, which you will also need, and some matte white spray paint, cups, and a popsicle stick to mix our epoxy. And you will also need a paintbrush to create the wood grain effect with the alcohol ink. So the first thing that we're going to do is prep our tumbler before we spray paint it white. So the first thing that we are going to do is put our foam football inside of our tumbler. We are going to use this foam football to hold our cup onto my tumbler rotator, which I'll show you guys later when it's time to do that. So to tear off some pieces of tape and you're gonna put them on the inside of your cup, like so. And I always let mine stick up just a little bit just to protect the inside rim from the epoxy resin because it is a pain in the butt to sand off. So this is just one step you don't have to do, but I recommend doing it because it will save you some time and work later. and our tumbler is ready to be spray painted. So simple as that, let's go spray paint this cup. Okay guys, so we are done prepping our tumbler. We have our spray painted white tumbler ready for the alcohol ink to go on so that we can create the wood grain. So let me show you guys how we do that. So for this step, you're going to need your prep tumbler, paintbrush, alcohol ink, and I always wear an apron and a glove for this step solely because I've gotten the alcohol ink splattered on my clothes or on your hand and it can stain your hand it can be kind of a pain to take off so just a fair warning and I also have a cut PVC pipe that I use for my handle which just makes it a little bit easier when I'm applying the alcohol ink to kind of rotate the cup as I am working okay so I put the PVC pipe in the cup so as you can see I have like a nice little handle here but now we are going to do the alcohol ink on the tumbler. So you're gonna be taking your alcohol ink and just dripping it down the tumbler. And you're just gonna be going up and down to create that wood grain effect.
Okay, so we have our alcohol ink on, and as you can see, we have this beautiful gray wood grain. So now it is ready for our first coat of epoxy. Okay, so we're putting our tumbler on my tumbler rotator. This is what I use to rotate all of my tumblers while I put epoxy on. It makes it really easy to have a nice even coat. Here is my part A and part B epoxy. You'll notice that they have two different color lids to help you keep them apart because you do mix them in separately. You'll also need two cups for this and a popsicle stick um, to stir up your epoxy mixture. And I also have gloves on my hands because you do not want to get this epoxy on your hands. It can burn your skin and you'll have a really bad reaction to it. You'll notice that on my paper cups I have drawn two black lines to help me measure out my epoxy because they have to be perfectly equal parts otherwise your epoxy will not cure right on your cups. So I'm going to take my part A and pour it to the line in the first cup. And then my part B I'm going to pour in my second cup. And like I said, they have to be perfectly equal parts or your resin will not cure right. And you do not want that. So it just makes it easier to draw out the line sometimes if you're not using your clear cups. So now I'm going to pour my part A into my part B mixture. I'm going to scrape the sides extremely well so that it is perfectly equal. And then I'm going to start stirring my mixture. You'll notice that when you start stirring your epoxy, it'll start to get extremely cloudy. You just have to keep stirring it until it becomes completely clear again. Okay, so now I'm ready to start pouring the epoxy on my tumbler. I typically pour with my left hand and then I use my right hand to get the epoxy covered all over the cup. So to do the bottom of the tumbler, you'll just dip your fingers in your epoxy and wipe it on the bottom. And then I use the palm of my hand and the side of my hand to just wipe it away just so it has a very thin coat on the bottom. If you get it too thick, the tumbler will become wobbly and may not stand up straight. So now we are all done with this step and we're going to leave our tumbler turning for about five to seven hours until it is completely cured to put on the vinyl. Hey guys, I'm back. So it's been about six hours since we put on our coat of epoxy on our tumbler. So I just wanna jump on here and show you guys what it looks like so far. So here is our gray tumbler and as you can see it has a glossy glass like finish to it. That's the epoxy. It is completely cured and it is ready for vinyl. So this is actually a customer order and they wanted some vinyl put on it. So I'm going to jump on our handy dandy Cricut machine aka my soulmate and show you guys how to do that in just a second. I also had a, another shade of gray alcohol ink that was quite a bit darker than that one that I really wanted to try because I haven't used it yet. So I went ahead and did a, another one and look how gorgeous this is. It almost has like a blue tint to it and I am just in love with these two colors. So this one's gonna have some white vinyl on it and this one's gonna have black vinyl on it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. All right guys, so my customer wanted their husband's name on this tumbler. So I have typed up his name here. I'm gonna go to make it. Continue. I've already cut out my piece of black vinyl that we're gonna be using for this. So I'm just going to place it on my mat. I'm only using one hand, so bear with me. So we are now going to load our mat into our machine. So you can see it goes inside these little guide things. 
and then we're gonna hit the load button. And it's loaded. So as long as you hit continue over here, it's ready to cut your vinyl. So then you're gonna come over here and hit the cut button. And it's gonna start cutting. And you can see over here, it tells you the percentage that it is completed the cut. done as you can see it says 100% so we're gonna come over here hit the unload button and it spits it out so now we're gonna take the vinyl off the mat and start weeding it okay guys so now we are going to weed out our design so that we can put it on our tumbler as you can see here I've already done one so this is what it looks like when it's all weeded out this one's gonna go on our dark gray tumbler and this one's gonna go on our light gray tumbler um, today I'm using a Cricut weeding tool. This came in a pack of four with three other tools. But let me show you guys how to do this. So you're going to pick a corner, doesn't matter which one. I always tend to lean towards the top left. But once you got it peeled up, it's pretty simple. Now we have our vinyl that is ready to go on our cup. So you can use the clear transfer tape. Cricut sells it, a bunch of other brands sell it. I like to use masking tape because it is so much cheaper than the transfer tape. It comes in a big roll and typically I can like reuse a piece if I'm doing a bunch of pieces at once. So I'm just gonna put this on my vinyl. And as you can see, I kind of shorted it there. So I'm gonna take this leftover tape right here and put it there, because we don't waste around here. I'm using this little, I call it like a rotary blade, but I don't think that's what it's called. But um, I bought this at Walmart for like six bucks or something. Boom. Now we're gonna take our handy and dandy spatula and just kind of rub the vinyl so it really sticks to that tape. Then I always flip it over and do the back side as well. Okay. So now that we have done that, now you should be able to peel your vinyl from the backing. This thicker vinyl sometimes is a little hard to work with, so sometimes you kinda have to just like press it into the tape to get it to really adhere to it. Okay, so now we have our vinyl and it is going to go on our tumbler now. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So she wants it to go on vertical, so up and down. And 
And we are just going to lay our tumbler here. And kind of pick where this is going to go. So I think that looks good. So I just kind of very lightly put it on. I always start in the very middle of the design because you are going to work it out. So with my finger, I'm just gonna go down the very middle of the tape and then I'm gonna go out both directions. And you can use your finger, you can use your little scraper tool, it's whatever you prefer. All right. So typically whenever I've placed it on, I do take my scraper and just kind of rub it just to make sure that I did get it all on there so that nothing tries to peel up when I'm peeling up my tape because I have peeled up my tape before and I've ripped my vinyl that was underneath. So you just kind of have to be careful with that. You just gotta, you gotta go slow and just kind of watch it. And voila. How cool is that? Okay, so now I'm ready to put another coat of epoxy on. Sometimes you can get away with only putting one more coat on, but I typically like to put at least two more coats on just so it's really sealed in and protected. So let's go put on another coat of epoxy. So now I'm just using my heat gun to pop any bubbles that may have been on my tumbler so they can be perfectly smooth. And I'm gonna let this cure for five to seven hours before I add the last coat of epoxy to these tumblers. Hey guys, I'm back. So I let our tumblers cure all the way through the night and I'm now ready to show you the finished product. So here is our dark gray tumbler with the white vinyl. I think it turned out amazing. And here is the light gray customer tumbler that we did with the black vinyl. I think these turned out pretty good. So if you enjoyed creating these gray wood grain tumblers with me as much as I did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any other crafting tutorials. See you guys next time.